everyone, Steve Jackson from Imprintables Warehouse here. And on this issue of the training timeout, I'm going to show you some editing tools for setting up graphics for working with canvas prints. Um, when you're working with a gallery type frame on a canvas print, you have a roll around to the sides of it where you've got a, about a quarter inch of material to, I'm, I'm sorry, not a quarter inch, a half inch to three quarters inch. Some of them are even deeper on over an inch and above that you need to have the canvas go around. Now if I was to do that, say this picture here set up for a 16 by 20, so I'll double click and make a square and let's resize this one. Um, say it was an inch around all the sides, instead of a 16 by 20, it would be a 19 by 15. And you can see, when I shift page up, bring that up, see how it's going to cut in a little bit. Now this one it's not too bad that it's not cutting off too much at the top there or the bottom or anything. Our, our subject in the photograph is centered into the entire project. But if this particular one, uh, the the head of the, the subject is a little bit higher or we've got some people up in here that we want to keep in it are too high. You're going to cut off portion of that. So we don't want to do that. We want to have it so that it wraps around and looks nice on there. Uh, the first method I've used for a long time is pretty simple on it. We've got our photograph. I've already resized it at 16 by 20. And I've got my page size here at 22 by 18. I'm giving myself an inch on all sides to be able to accommodate because the particular stretcher bars that I use are three quarter inches. So that gives me another quarter inch on the back side of it there. So I'll take the picture and I simply hit control C and I copy it. I'll give it a second or two and then control V and put it right back on there. So I've got two of these on there and the second one I'm going to resize out. We'll make it uh, unproportional and it's going to be 22 by 18. So you can see that one there, and I'll, I'll arrange it to the back of the page. I can either hit Shift and Page Down, or I can order to back a page, uh, back a layer, so I'll drop it back. And you can see how it's kind of duplicated around there, all around the outsides. And that kind of has a not-so-pleasing effect. It's almost a little bit of vertigo kind of looking at it, because it, it chops off there. So what I do with this one is I'll take that second bitmap, and I'm going to put some blur onto it. Uh, I like the Gaussian blur and I'll click on that one. And you can pick any type of value. Anywhere above 40 seems to work pretty well for me. So I'll hit 43 and hit OK. And you can see how it's going to create a bit of blur around the edges to where it kind of matches in somewhat with a, a photograph there. So I could uh, again do a box that contains it on here. We'll give that no outline so it's kind of hidden in the back. And we'll take in our picture and power clip it. I could take effects power clip place inside the container and select oop uh, I've got a, the photograph needs to be behind it behind that one so I moved it down in layer you can see on my object manager over here it was above the rectangle and now it's behind so now I go to effects power clip and place it inside that container you can see it gets clipped off and I've got a nice clean edge to work with when I'm wrapping around that gallery frame so not a bad effect fairly easy way to do it um, but there's another newer way that I've been playing around with lately, and I used it in my last Versa Cam class, and it was uh, pretty successful, and everybody seemed to like it quite a bit. So we've got our photograph here, and I'm going to create a second page. And we'll take the image off of the first page, or Control C, and I'm going to take it to the second page and paste it on there. And once it shows up here, we're going to use our crop tools and take a section at a time of it. So I'll use my crop tool right here, and what I'm going to do is go from that node and down to the bottom to the edge here, and we'll change the width on this. I only need an inch on each side, so we'll make this one inch right there, and we can make it 16 because that's the height of it. And then I need to change the position of it here so it's all the way over on that edge there. So let's try 0.5, I think. Nope, I went too far. I need to do it at 1, 1 1.5. A little bit of trial and error here. So I'm just going to take that section right there. So when I hit enter with the crop tool, it's taken that section there. And now I can take that whole piece and control X. So I'm going to cut it out of here. And I'll take it back to my first page. And control V. And now it's, it's behind it there. So let's move it on over. We'll go to our select. And I can take this in on the placement there. Oops. 0.5. 
and we'll have it butt right up against it. So it's right up against it and when you zoom in you can see a little bit of that line. If you want to adjust it you can kind of bump it in just one little nudge there and it's there. But what I'll do next is what really sets it apart from, from the other ways I've done it. You can see it's a duplicate of it there but what I'll do is I'll use my mirror tool and mirror it up against it. So now you can see it's kind of a continuous flow going across there. So, And as we zoom in you see it kind of shows a little bit of line. It may or may not show up on your screen but when you zoom in you can see it blends really nice across there. Um, so don't always pay attention. You see a little bit of a line there. I could take it and, and play around pushing it back and forth and get it to disappear a little bit and that's fine too. You've got some play room in this here. So we've got that side done. Now let's do the same. Control C with the other side there. Control V, paste it in here. And we're going to clip this side of it over here. So again, we'll go to our crop tool, go to this node up here, extend it down. I'll change my width to 1. And then I got to play around with my sizing here. So it's at 20.5. Let's do 21.5. Oops. Oh no, I made some mistakes there. So let's go back and back again. Nope, wrong way, Steve. So we just need to change the, the sizing. Control Z is my friend on this here. So I can take this portion here and I need to change the placement on it 20.5 and that put it right where I wanted it. So it's going to clip that edge. So we'll hit enter. Oh, and I was on page. Wow, I really messed up there. Well, let's try this over again. <laughs> the Control Z is your friend. So con Control C, we'll copy that picture there and Control V and drop it in here and we'll do that whole section over. I, I kind of got a little excited with my fingers there and went too fast and, and messed things up a little bit. So take that node there up to the top of it and we're going to get it till it's one inch across right here and 20.5 is placement so it's catching that edge and I'll hit enter so now I've got just that slicer that's what I was looking for and we're gonna copy that or cut it rather paste it and notice it's on the side over here so we need to change its placement so instead of 20.5 we'll do 21.5 and that moves it over right there again we'll mirror it and I can bump it over slightly so that that line is gone and we've got a nice smooth transition right in here so you can see it coming across. So now at this time though I want to take the entire picture because I'm going to take this portion at the top here and this portion on the bottom and have it contain also those bits right there. So this time we'll copy the entire picture so control C with all the little add-ons that we have and on page 2 control V put it on there and this time when we use that crop tool we'll take the top node over here Let's zoom in on a little bit and we'll take an inch off the top, sort of like cutting some hair, right? And this time we'll do one inch there, and well, we should be at 16.5 here. And that'll take it right to the top. So I've got my whole portion there, and I'll hit enter. That'll clip that one off. We'll go back to page one, and control V, and it's on there, but we just need to, oh, whoops, go back to page two, and I need to select all this. And control X. We'll take all of this right here. So I copy and cut it, paste it. Now we're going to mirror it and we'll change its position. Instead of 16.5, that'll be 17.5. And that'll bring it right up. I can drop it just down a hair or two. And we can see we've got a nice mirror across there, going straight across. Once again, take everything on here. Control C to copy it over. Still copying, control V, and once it's all in there, we'll use our crop tool again, take from this bottom node here, bring it over, make it one inch, and 1.5 is my placement, so it's right along the bottom, hit enter, and then go back to my pick tool, take all of this here. Control X to cut it out of there, bring it back to page one, paste it on there with Control V, again do my mirror, and once we've got it mirrored there, I can change it down now to 0.5, and it's right where we want it, 
bring it up just a hair and I've got a beautiful picture here with everything blended real well on the edges so that when it's completely done you'll see it just kind of mirror back onto the edge of the canvas. So that's this week's training timeout. Uh, hopefully it's been useful for you out there if you're trying to work with canvas prints and going around the uh, gallery frames and uh, we'll see you on the next training timeout. Thanks for stopping by. Thank you.